Ooh. Oh, here's my lovely wife. Let me just tell her something very, very, very naughty. Oh, oh, I really like your eyes. Oh, oh, I really like uh, the dinner you made last night. Ooh la la. Oh, I really like how we take care of the kids together and go to sleep early, early around 8.30 p.m. usually because we are two very tired people. Send. Ooh, uh, I like it that we have a monogamous relationship and everything is really, really cool between us. I love you. Send. Ooh, yeah. Man, what if I had to bring uh, the text message that I sent to my wife to a USCIS marriage interview? Wouldn't that suck? Wouldn't that be like a little embarrassing? What if I had to read those text messages to somebody, you know, publicly, uh, using the voice that I type them in, because we all type in voices. We all type in little baby voices to our loved ones. Yeah, wouldn't that be embarrassing? Could it actually be a liability in my case? Probably not that. I mean, that, that sounded pretty good. But what if I had something else? What if my text messages, or my Facebook posts, or my Tiki Talkies, or my Twitteratis, or my uh, Instagrammies, what if those kind of expose something that uh, could hurt my case? That'd be a problem, right? Well, that's why we need to be really careful with our phones in 2022 and going forward as we go to USCIS marriage interviews. Some offices allow them. So let's talk about some things that you can be doing in order to, you know, do a better job at your marriage interview if your phone is with you. So here's three cell phone tips for your marriage interview. Hi everybody, my name is Damian DeNoble. This is Law Great, the channel where I give you reliable information, help you make better decisions, and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. Maybe we'll expand soon. Maybe the channel will be all about, about all sorts of legal things soon. Who knows? Who knows? Let's talk about the phone. Um, the phone gets a lot of people into trouble, kind of in, in just in generally in the world, right? It's, it's a supercomputer in the palm of your hand. It contains your whole life, you know, all of these things that you hear all the time. That's true within an immigration interview setting, whether it's at the consulate or, or at the USCIS. So um, I wanna talk about how to protect yourself. Uh, what I've seen is, you know, you get, you're getting more and more of these stories and these different lawyer channels where they're, uh, not just on YouTube, but I mean, places where lawyers talk, places where we talk about our clients in, in, in a way that's that, that protects the clients. But more and more, you know, US office, USCIS officers, consulate officers, CBP checking phones um, to see what's on them. For a long time, I've been saying, if you're crossing into the United States, make sure that whatever phone you have is is kind of free of, of social media and just files you wouldn't want somebody snooping because there's a, there's a lack of a Fourth Amendment protections against search and seizure when you're entering the United States. But increasingly, that's also true um, just in general when dealing with US agencies in the Department of Homeland Security, specifically USCIS, then uh, separately the Department of State. But let's focus on USCIS today. So what happens is, let's say you, 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 you somehow you bring your phone into an interview, some places still don't allow phones, but let's say you're in a place that does. You bring your phone to an interview, the officer can ask you to see specific parts of your phone, right? They can ask you, can I see your text messages with your partner? Can I see your Facebook? Um, can I see your Instagram? And while you can refuse, a refusal can also get you flagged for something like a Stokes interview, or it can get you kind of win you the ire, the anger of that officer. And so generally when you have a phone, you, you kind of give it over with some, and you can put restrictions on it. Say, okay, please only look at the text messages between my partner and I, here's my Facebook, please only stay on the newsfeed, yada, yada, yada. But let's talk about kind of four ways that you can protect yourself so that you don't have to be scrambling at the last minute. Okay, here's the first piece of advice. Okay. The first big piece of advice is don't bring your phone to the interview. The best protection you have against your phone is actually sending in a complete thorough application, whether you're filing online or via paper, so that all of the evidence that you submit is all the evidence you need to get through the interview. And maybe you supplement it with a few additional photos, a few additional uh, pieces of ev evidence showing that you have a bona fide marriage or just a strong relationship, you know, evidence you, you didn't have you know, when you when you filed and you just accumulated since filing. But 
by far the best way to protect yourself is to have a complete packet when you file than to just bring in additional physical documents without your phone to the interview. Because if your phone is not at the interview, they're not going to make you go to the car and get it uh, because there's nowhere in instructions right now that says you need to bring your phone. Okay, so if you do that, then the rest of this video doesn't even apply to you. You don't have to think about it. Okay, so by far that's number one. Number two. Number two is uh, your text messages with you and your partner are going to be one of the first things that an officer uh, looks at. It's something that has a strong nexus between what the officer is looking for, which is evidence of a bona fide relationship and whether one actually exists. So it seems to be something that's pretty protected in terms of the officer requesting it. As a lawyer, I have a hard time kind of saying no to that. Um, when you're asked for that, if you're asked for that, again, you, you brought your phone for some reason, but if you're asked for that, you know, it'd be good, you know, that you know ahead of time what's in those texts. And if you have things like, uh, let's say, uh, sensitive information of a financial type, something of a personal type that, that is not relevant to your relationship, if you have anything sort of pornographic lewd on there, you know, feel free to delete all that before you come to the interview. And what I would avoid is actually deleting things in the interview. Don't do that, okay? But deleting them before you come to the interview is important. And you want to make sure that you and your partner both kind of, you know, you both have a, a mirror of one another's texts. So make sure that you're deleting the same thing so that there's no uh, differences between your two texts. Because if you find it on one and not on the other, well, then what's the point of deleting it, okay? So just making sure that your texts are informative for the officers to the nature of the relationship, but so they don't contain things that can potentially hurt you or embarrass you, right? So that's tip one, pretty straightforward. Number two, your social media accounts. You know, I could tell you, go ahead and clean up your Facebook, clean up your Instagram, clean up your Tiki Talk, whatever. But really, my big advice is just delete it off your phone. There is no reason that your Facebook accounts, TikTok accounts, Instagram accounts, Snapchat accounts need to be present on your phone when you are in that interview. Unlike the Department of State, the USCIS doesn't ask you to list all your social media profiles and they can't ask you to install them on your phone when you're there in the interview. If they do, that's 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 a really weird thing. You should put a stop to that, note it, and then, you know, you can pretty I think pretty firmly challenge any trouble that might arise from you refusing to install an app on your phone, but just don't have it on your phone. Because you know, you know that when you scroll through your social media, you take a thousand actions an hour. It's impossible in some ways to delete all the comments. It's impossible in some ways to delete all the posts, to keep track of what was said, who said it, blah, blah, blah. Maybe there's a risque photo somewhere that somebody tagged years ago uh, that, that the officer could see because when they see, you know, your social media from your phone, they see everything, right? It's not like private mode matters at that point. So, you know, the big, 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 big tip there is just get rid of your social media before you get to the interview. If for some reason you need it, you just love having those notifications every day, then at least, you know, know what's in it. And same advice as for the text messages, uh, you know, get rid of lewd stuff no alcohol or drug use. I know, I know, it's not because I'm a Puritan, it's just, just do it and, uh, you know, make sure that it reflects positively on your relationship, okay? And then fourth tip is your photos. You know, the photos are something that the officers will often ask for if the phone is present. Again, the best defense is just to have sent in your photos in a complete packet beforehand, but your photos should, you know, just be aware that a lot can be seen with like a scroll. And so again, you want your photos to, your whole photo, you know, file, to uh, reflect well on you. And again, no drug or alcohol use. Um, I would refrain from things like political memes, um, things of that nature being saved in there. Um, anything pornographic, lewd, which is like fine to have, but just, you know, don't show it to your uh, officer. And again, just things that reflect well in your relationship. Okay, so that's, th those are kind of the four things. So your photos, your social media, your texts, and then number one, just don't bring your phone, period, if, if, if you can help it, okay? We're in this new era. It's 2022. We're in the future. I think phones are increasingly going to become something that officers look at, and it's going to be increasingly incumbent upon you to protect yourself by doing what USCIS actually asks and making complete paper filings. You know, ironically, the paper system is, for a while, going to be a way to protect yourself from this really intrusive sort of new way of judging whether your relationships are real, whether your marriages are bona fide. So I hope that's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.